this week's edition of the Weekly Buck. As always, I'm Tori Tripp, joined here with my co-host, Nicole Papa. We have a great show for you today, so let's get right into it. So, Tori, I've been thinking, and I think I found a place where you belong perfectly. And what would that be, Nicole? Drama club. Hold on, what are you trying to say? I'm saying that you're extremely dramatic, and you could put good, it to good use. I don't know if I should be offended by that, but drama club does sound pretty interesting, actually. Well, the Drama Club just put on their spring show, and Griffin, Ryan, and Jacob have more information on that, so let's send it over to them. The Oswego High School Drama Club presented an evening of student-written, directed, and acted short plays at 7.30 p.m. on both April 26th and 27th in the Robinson Faust Theater Performing Arts at OHS. The, this evening of short, original plays closed a dynamic theater season for OHS. It was inspired by the Me Too movement. The Oswego High School productions included a mid-century classic Picnic by William Ng and Cole Porter's Battle of the Sexes musical Kiss Me Kate. The New Plays Festival's American Girl theme focused on the emotional, intellectual, and social aspects of being a modern young woman. As Garrett Heater, Drama Club co-advisor with Robert Dumas, has been working with the young playwrights of the students who recently received pointers during a workshop from SUNY Oswego Theater Department Chair Mark Cole. A similar play festival presented last spring was embraced by a community of supporters of the arts. Senior Derek Putman's two-man play, A Second of Your Time, focuses on a high school boy's conversation with a counselor review, revealing hilarious and setting his girlfriend. Sophomore Zeta, Zeta Olson's four-man, four-woman play, The Interview, is set by a dystopian future with women competing in increasingly bizarre ways for a single job opportunity. Other new plays include Why Wait by Alexandra Reith, Maybe It's Because I'm a Woman by Jonathan, and Behind the Mind by Kat McGeary. Student directors include Aiden Thompson, Mitchell Hudson, Veronica Jones, Ali Griffin, and Grace Hoffman. Student actors include Alexander Pauline, Liam Tobey, Gretchen Dowd, Caitlin Nettles, Abby Cook, Melanie Solano, Kendra Garvey, Tori Payne, and Andrew Newman. Former SUNY Oswego Theater Department Chair Mark Cole will host the workshop for the student directors and actors and had recently led members of the OHS Drama Club in an acting of directing workshop. The Oswego High School Drama Club is proud to give students a platform for their voices to be heard. It is important for the students to gain experience in these areas of playwriting and directing and not just acting. Heater will provide guidance for the emerging playwrights. Drama Club is open to all interested students at any time. Wow, that did look very interesting, but I just still cannot believe you called me dramatic on air. You have to admit that you are, though, especially when it comes to sports. Point made. I know. I can't imagine what you're like during the playoffs, though. It's definitely worse. The NHL playoffs got me pretty fired up. It's not pretty. So I'm sure you'd like to hear some hot takes? Always. Well, Nick and Dane not only have some on the NHL playoff, but they even included some NBA takes as well. So let's take a look at that. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first playoff analysis where we will break down the remaining teams left in the NBA playoffs. He's Nick Victory. I'm Ben Richards, and of course, your resident basketball experts. First off, Nick, if you remember, we made an NBA playoff preview, and we both had the Golden State Warriors winning it all. You had them beating the Toronto Raptors. I had them beating the Milwaukee Bucks. My prediction, however, is definitely in some danger after the Celtics dominated Game 1 in Milwaukee. Nick, how does Milwaukee turn the series around, and do you think they will? I think they will turn it around. I think this game, I think it's going to go to a Game 7 in this series, and... I think Boston will win it in Milwaukee, which I think will be a close game because, I mean, away games, game seven, those are always tough to win. But uh, I think Kyrie Irving is very experienced in the playoffs, and I think he's going to pull through. I don't think Giannis has enough experience to pull his team through yet. I was just going to say that Giannis is someone like Eric Bledsoe is really going to have to step up. I think Paul Pierce said it best. When the playoffs come, the difference in talent really shows up, and so far it looks like Boston has more talent. And again, credit Danny Ainge for putting that team together. Nick, your prediction, however, the Raptors have done extremely well so far in the playoffs. Pascal Siakam has been a superstar alongside Kawhi Leonard's great performances. Do you think there are any mismatches that the Philadelphia 76ers can take advantage of to potentially steal this series? I think Embiid inside against Marcus Hall could a little bit, but Marcus Hall's so big and strong inside that it's going to be hard for Embiid to do that. But anywhere else, I just don't see it happening because there's really good wings for Toronto. Lowry is 
uh, more experienced than Ben Simmons, and they don't have to guard Ben Simmons out there. So I think the series ends in five games. Marcus Gasol also stretches the floor for the Raptors. I also like the Raptors in five or six. Switching to the Western Conference, well, Nick, the world got the matchup they wanted. The Houston Rockets against the Golden State Warriors once again. Steph hit the dagger in game one to give it to the Warriors, but that wasn't the big storyline. The Rockets were irate at the refs at the end of the game, saying the Warriors were favored unfairly. What's your take on this whole thing? I think the Rockets are being very fair here. James Harden got fouled on that last three. There's like probably three or four instances where James Harden at least got fouled on a three. Clay and Draymond have both been jumping into him, and they haven't been calling him. Uh, Harden's been falling over after he's shooting. They're not calling anything. So I think Harden deserves at least some more free throws, especially on that last shot because that kind of ended the game. And then I thought when Chris Paul got the rebound and tried to pass it, I thought he got fouled again on the pass when it uh, and then he got thrown out. Yeah, he got thrown out because they uh, he turned it over. Yeah. And went Warriors ball, and the game was over after that. So I do think there were some calls that the refs should have corrected, but the Warriors have played their way. They have gotten the respect. So... I think that's why the calls go that way. But I tweeted this out before. I think the Houston Rockets are the mean girls of the NBA. The Golden State Warriors are a close second. Why? How about both teams stop crying about the refs and just actually put the ball in the basket and I play agree. a game? So, Nick, before we close, we can't forget about Dame Lillard, Portland Trailblazers, about his heroics, that buzzer beating 37 foot three against the Thunder in game five to close them out. What was your reaction on that shot? I was speechless. It's one of the most iconic shots of all time. It's up there with Iverson's crossover. It's one of the most iconic things that's happened in the NBA this the wave. century. The wave. the wave and the shot in both. I think it's more iconic than Iverson's crossover, honestly, over Tyron Ty Ty Lue. Before we go, same predictions. You got the Warriors over the Raptors, Nick? Yeah, Warriors over Raptors in four or five. Four or five. I think the Warriors will only lose at max two more games the rest of the playoffs. I hate to say it, but I'm going to change my prediction. I feel like Nick's going to be right. And I'm going Warriors over the Raptors in six. That'll wrap up our NBA playoff analysis. He's Nick Victory. I'm Dane Richardson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our second part of our playoff analysis. But here we break down the NHL. I'm joined here by fellow OHS hockey player Alec Carroccio to talk about some of the craziness going on in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs. Speaking of all that craziness, Alec, four wildcard teams, all four wildcard teams are still in the playoffs, that being, of course, the Blue Jackets, Hurricanes, Avalanche, and Dallas Stars. So I want to hear from you. How can you explain all these upsets going on right now? Well, right now, Hurricanes are hot after beating the Caps. It's a big win. The Caps were the Stanley Cup champs last mm -hmm. year, so that's a big win for them. Columbus beats Tampa in four. That's yeah. insane. The that's Islanders just swept my Penguins, just dismantled them much more aggressive, even though they were the higher seed. One of the things I wanted to talk about is the resilience of this Carolina Hurricanes team. Not many people thought they would knock off, like you said, the defending Stanley Cup champion, the Washington Capitals. They did that on the road in Game 7. And then many actually predicted a letdown playing the Islanders because of the rest discrepancy. Islanders had a lot of rest. Hurricanes just went right into the series. But now they're up 2-0, heading back home to a rowdy crowd. How far do you think Carolina can go, Alec? I feel like Carolina can win, but I feel like the Islanders are going to pull off a win at home at some point. Yeah, I, I think Carolina will probably pull out that series. Boston, if they end up beating Columbus, both Boston and Columbus are very good hockey teams, so it's going to be tough. It was also really cool to see in Game 2, Curtis McElhaney come in for the injured Peter Morazic in net for the Hurricanes, really show that next man up mentality for the Hurricanes. Now, we can't focus on every team left in the playoffs, so we're going to switch to the Western Conference here. The Colorado Avalanche, uh, great Series win over the Calgary Flames. They were the top seed in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. I love what Miko Ratanen's doing. Um, five goals, six assists in the playoffs. They're facing a tough team, though, in San Jose. Just came back from a 3-1 deficit. Do you think Colorado can knock off San Jose? I do not think Colorado can knock off San Jose. Colorado is playing hot at this point, but they cannot go up against the, all the veterans that San Jose has. Yeah. With Brett Burns, with Eric Carlson. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just tough. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. Actually, a great story for the Avalanche defenseman, Kale McCarr, winning the Hobie Baker Award, Hobie Baker Award Excuse me, mm -hmm. goes to the best player in college hockey, played in the Frozen Four for UMass, yep. now trying to lead the Avalanche to a cup. But like you said, it's going to be very tough trying to knock off guys like Eric Carlson, Brett Burns, Joe Thornton, still mm -hmm. looking for that elusive first Stanley Cup. So with all the teams left, could you give me a prediction? Who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup this year? I'm thinking this year it's going to be San Jose, just because they're playing hot, they're able to squish teams that – are playing hot too. I mean, but you can't beat all the veterans that they have. I think that they have so much experience in the Stanley Cup playoffs. I mean, the, the Thornton's been there, but he hasn't got one yet. I mean, Eric Carlson's been there, he hasn't got one yet, so they're thirsty. 
I like that prediction. However, I have San Jose in the Stanley Cup Finals as well. I like Brad Marchand, mm -hmm. Brad Marchand and the Bruins. They're, they have playoff experience. I know Columbus just went in and won in overtime to come back game in game two, but they grinded out a series against a good Austin Matthews-led Toronto team, and I don't think they're going to face another team like that until they get to the finals against the Sharks. I think that'll be a great series. So I have the Bruins winning the Stanley Cup Finals. That'll wrap up our NHL playoff analysis. He's Alec Carroccio. I'm Dane Richardson. Let's send it back to the studio. You know, I have a lot to say about what I just watched, but maybe I should just keep my cool. You know what? I consider your ability to get so dramatic over sports a talent. Is that supposed to be a compliment? Yeah, maybe you should have auditioned for Swiggo's Got Talent. And how, how would I have done that? I'm not sure, but you are creative and I have faith in you. If you wanted to see how the show went, Dimitri, Timmy, Barton, and Ash have a quick recap for us, so let's send it over to them. The Oswego's Got Talent finals start very soon and has been filled with some of Oswego's best talent around. In the senior division are Sasha Loeza and Nick Lavolsi. In the intermediate division, are Miley Sorrendo and Vera Buchko. And in the elementary division are Gracelyn Erickson and Alex Daigle. They're all going to the finals, but are joined by three wildcard finishers, Vanessa Flint, Madison Morris, and Cadence Erickson. With judges Gary Carpentier, Tammy Wilkinson, and Carrie Lazarus, and even a special guest judge, Tanisha Murphy, they all bring more energy and personality to round out the whole show. The finals will be on May 9th at the American Foundry. Come see the show to watch some of Oswego's best talent. For more information, contact Oswego Rotary at Oswego Rotary Club 4855 at gmail.com. Tickets are available through ticketleap.com. You know, I definitely think I would have won. Debatable. It's amazing how dramatic you can be. Wow, okay, maybe we should just end this year then. Okay, if you say so. Thank you for watching this week's edition of the Weekly Book. Have a great week, Oswego.